Hi, I'm Fook with Alpha B Group, and today we're going to talk about estimated tax penalties. For estimated tax penalties, also known as underpayment penalty, what this is, this is a penalty during the year. So going through the slides, um, making sure that everyone knows that this is actually different from the late payment penalty, the late filing penalty, and interest. So all these penalties are usually penalties incurred after the due date of the tax return, while the estimated tax penalty is actually the penalty you incur throughout the year for not paying enough taxes. So the way the IRS works is that they want you to pay taxes as you make money. So it's a pay-as-you-go system. So as you're making money throughout the year, they want you to, to pay the taxes that you owe on that money you're making. And the way they do this is by saying that, okay, if you made a certain amount between January and March, they're going to want you to make the tax payment on that income in April. So because IRS expects you to make these tax payments on a quarterly basis, there are two ways you can make these payments. One is through withholdings, where if you're getting a paycheck and your employer withholds taxes for you, what they do is they take the taxes out of your paycheck and then they send that over to the IRS in California for taxes. The second way is if you want to send in a payment yourself as a prepayment where you send it directly to the IRS. Um, and we usually recommend this to be paid online. So usually the people who have to make these prepayments are business owners because there is no withholdings on their business profits. So they have to make sure that they pay these estimated tax payments quarterly people with high rental profits, same thing as business owners because rental income doesn't have any withholdings. For people who receive RSU vesting because there isn't enough taxes being withheld usually with RSU vesting or even options. And generally, if you owe taxes every year when you file your tax return, it might be good to consider making these prepayments to avoid any penalties when at time of filing. So next, I'm gonna discuss that there are actually two calculations that you could do to figure out how much you should prepay to avoid penalty. So the first calculation, and I like to separate this out as a last year calculation and a this year calculation. So we'll start with this year. So what you could do is calculate your taxes for this year by saying, okay, whatever your taxes is at the end of the year, you could pay 90% of it on a quarterly basis. Meaning that, think about it as we are working with buckets. So bucket one is Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So each bucket, the IRS expects you to put money into it as a tax payment to avoid a penalty. You could either make the payments through withholdings, through payroll, or through estimated tax payments. And the other rule, let me reduce my face right here, okay. And the other rule is that you could take 100% of last year's taxes, this is last year's rule, you can take 100% of last year's taxes and calculate that into the buckets here. I did a really bad job at explaining that, but pretty much the problem with the IRS is that there's a lot of but, ifs, and ands inside their wording. So um, the way the IRS is that, says is that 100% of last year's taxes, or you could pay 90% of this year's taxes, if you use 100% of last year's taxes, but if your income is over 150K, you have to use 110% of last year's taxes. So let me explain this in a little bit more detail. So the general rule of which one to use is that if your current year's income is higher than last year's income, then you're gonna to wanna to use this rule right here. But if your current year's income is lower than last year's income, you're gonna to wanna to use this rule right here. So to kind of explain how this works when it comes to actual figures, let's just say total income is $400,000 and then the tax on that $400,000 income is $110,400. So the way with the 90% rule is that you take 90% of this 110, which equals to $99,360. And what the IRS will do is say, okay, of this $99,360, we want you to pay this quarterly. So we'll split this up into each bucket. So one fourth of this is put into this bucket and on, right? So in Q1, the IRS wants you to make a $24,840 tax payment to put into this bucket. And then in Q2, they want you to put the same amount in this bucket and just put it over evenly. Now, if we run the calculation for the 100% rule, just using the same information here, um, but last year's income was $200,000 and then the tax is $41,000, 
because income this year is over this 150, it's 400,000. Because it's over this, we have to use 110% instead of 100%. So 110% of 41,000 is 45,100. So divide that by four, that goes into each bucket. So that's what the IRS wants you to pay. And between these two rules, remember it's or, you could choose the lower of. So because if we use the last year's method, definitely it's way lower because we only have to pay 11275 compared to this $24,000 we have to pay. So what we could do is tell the IRS is like, okay, to avoid a penalty, all we have to do is make this payment of 11275 Now part of the payment you're making could be through withholding. So if you're working as a W-2 employee, you will have withholding. So let's just say out of this $400,000 income, there was withholding of $44,000 total for the whole year. So what the IRS says is that, okay, as part of your payment towards this bucket, we'll take the $44,000 divided by four as well, and we'll say that, okay, that's part of your payment. So 11,000 is part of your payment, meaning that all you have to do is make $11,275 in payments, but because you already made 11,000, this leaves $275 that you can make into the rest of this bucket. Um, and that will follow for every single quarter. So if you don't make this $275, then there will be a penalty, but there's no penalty on the first thousand dollars. So with this one, I think the total here is $1,100. So you would only pay a penalty on the first hundred dollars and the penalty is around three percent. So let's move on to the, another example where the income is flipped. So let's just say that this year you made less income compared to last year. So let's flip it up. So let's just say this year you made $200,000 instead and then last year you made $400,000, okay? So this year, $200,000, the tax on $200,000 is $41,000. Let's just use the 90% rule which is 36,900, divide that by four, it goes into that bucket. So in this bucket, the IRS wants you to pay $9,225. And let's just say you had some withholding of $22,000. Well, divide that by four, use that as a credit against this 9,225. So that divided by four is 5,500, meaning that you only have $3,725 left to put into this bucket that you must pay as a prepayment. Now, if we took last year's rule, if we try to do last year's rule with where your income was actually higher, um, say $400,000, tax on that is $110,400. We have to use the 110% rule because income's over $150,000. So tax that they're expecting you to pay is $121,440. It split that by four, it goes into this bucket. So because you only withheld 22,000 here, minus 5,500 here as a credit, that means that in this bucket, the IRS wants you to pay an, an additional 24,860. So remember, you take the lower between the two. So it's a, you take the lower between this one or this one. And because this one is lower, we're gonna say we want to use this bucket. And for this bucket, all you have to do is make this $3,725 payment every quarter and you won't face a penalty. But what happens if you decide not to make these prepayments, let's just say for the first three quarters? So let's say you don't make these quarter payments, but you wanna make one lump sum payment of 14,900. Because you didn't make a payment here, you didn't make a payment here, you didn't make a payment here, they're gonna charge you a penalties for having these buckets not being paid. Meaning that the penalty will be around 3% of the total that wasn't paid. So even though you've made all the payments in this bucket, because these buckets are empty, you have to pay a penalty for that. And a penalty for this would be around $335 using the 3% rule, but this penalty number could change depending on what the rate is in any, in any year. Now, there will be some cases where sometimes, you know, if you make income, not all your income is made evenly every quarter as what the IRS assumes. Sometimes you could have a big windfall of income in just Q4. So let's use this as an example. Let me move my face, okay, right there. So let's just say in Q1 you made $50,000, Q2 you made $50,000, Q3 is $50,000. But in Q4 you sold a lot of stock and made $250,000 in total. So now what happens is that the way the IRS sees it is that you made $400,000 in income. So they thought you made $100,000 per quarter. So they're gonna want you to pay taxes based off $100,000 per quarter. But in this case, that's not true because you made most of your income through Q4. So what we have to do is calculate, okay, what is the tax? It's 110,400, meaning that 
the way the IRS assumes it is that they're going to want you to pay $24,840 per quarter based off of what they assume. But we have to claim annualized, meaning that, hey, IRS, I didn't make this money $400,000 evenly throughout the year. I made most of it in Q4. So we have to let IRS know that we have to report a special form that shows that you made your money mostly in Q4 and that you could avoid making these estimated tax payments in these three quarters and make it all in Q4 without any penalties. This is called an annualized method. Now the due dates for these three quarters is April 15th for Q1, June 15th for Q2, September 15th for Q3, and January 15th of the following year for Q4. So Q1 represents January till March, and you make the payment middle of April. And Q2 represents April to end of May, which you paid in June. I don't know why it's two months. It's a little strange. So Q3 payment is through June, through end of August, which is made in September. And the remainder of the year is made January 15th. Now, to make this even more complicated, if you live in California and your income is over a million dollars, you don't get to choose the the last year's method you're forced to only use this year's method so keep that in mind if you know income is going to be over a million dollars and you're a california resident that you need to make your prepayments based off of this year's method or face a pretty stiff penalty also for california i don't know why they do this it's so dumb but the way the irs calculates your taxes that they want you to prepay is split evenly throughout the quarter which makes sense california they don't do that. They don't follow that rule. Their rule is that they want you to pay 30% the first quarter. The first quarter. They want you to pay 40% the second quarter, zero for the third quarter, and 30% for the fourth quarter. For some reason, they want pretty much 70% in the first six months. I don't know why, but that's their rule. Or they're going to charge a penalty based off of any underpayment. So if you're using a 25% method, as you were using for IRS, California will charge you a penalty because technically it's paying, it's underpaying. So that's estimated tax payments. I usually recommend clients to make these estimated payments online. It's way easier because it's just a direct withdrawal through your bank account. But if you want to go old school, you could send in a check. Just make sure you have to send in the vouchers. The voucher is like a printed paper that shows your name, social security number, address, and it shows what year to apply the payment to. So you got to make sure if you send in a check, you have these vouchers. But if you pay online, it's way easier. You select the year that you want to apply to, you pick estimated taxes, and you just make the direct withdrawal. And that's estimated tax penalty. I hope you found it useful. I encourage you to talk taxes with other colleagues and friends and family. If you find this video that might be helpful for them, please share it. And as always, subscribe, like, and share. I'm off to my next video.